Greetings, Guardians. My name is Byfear. Okay, so, uh, hmm. There's no script for this. I mean, there's a tiny bit of a script while I summarize the cutscene that we got this week. But I think I should preface this by saying that this will be more than one video. This will most definitely be multiple videos following things up. And I think it's fair to also start with some actual summary of what's going on and then to lend a little bit of a voice to everything that has been said by the community at this point. So, first of all, we're going to go ahead and talk about what happened this week, and then I'm going to leave you with some thoughts at the end. If you want the no-spoilers version, go ahead and play the weekly quest. It's unbelievably short. You will get to this cutscene in no time at all. With all of that said, the cutscene is as follows, and I'm going to summarize it here as well as having it in the background. The witness, as it turns out, is not an individual person. Before the witness, there was an entire people who, for the moment, I'm going to call the predecessors. The predecessors to the witness discovered the traveler on their world. It allowed them to grow and prosper, and they called it the Gardener. It's clear now that this is where the name within the Unveiling Law mythology comes from. The Gardener, aka the Traveler, helped them bring about a golden age of prosperity on their world, much like it had with many others. It brought gifts, but not wisdom, though. The really interesting thing is that the cutscene even seems to show that the Traveler was buried in the ground of the world. I'm not sure what that implies, except for the fact that maybe these people were some of the first, or perhaps that the Traveler, due to some circumstances we still haven't learned about, was left on this world buried. Either way, with the abundance of light and life that they had somehow been gifted with, there was still something missing. Purpose. With nothing but revelry and a practical paradise to live in, they looked beyond for meaning and structure. They studied the light and knew that it could create life and growth, but they also knew that it could bring about primordial chaos and destruction without meaning, and they saw that as meaningless suffering, and they believed that they needed to control it. Their scholars eventually discovered that the Traveler shared a connection with another cosmic entity in the universe. This entity was the Veil. In the Veil, they discovered the power of the darkness. The Veil's discovery changed the predecessors and showed them the potential for purpose that they craved. Understanding that darkness was a power that could be shaped by thought and consciousness, they realized that it could finally provide them with the means to change the universe that they had so wished for. They believed that they could use the darkness to become the winnower to the Traveler's gardening. They would be able to control the chaos of the light using the power of darkness. They would be able to take light and darkness and shape the universe as they wished. They would control reality. As they resolved to control reality themselves, they believed that they could use these powers to mold reality into a perfect, final shape, without a need for change brought by chaos, without a need for suffering, without a need for anything whatsoever, but this perfect final shape. They moved to claim the veil, and were successful. They studied it, and they studied the power of darkness, and eventually they brought it back to their homeworld, bringing it close enough to the Traveler that they might link the two entities. This link would allow them to reshape reality to their desires, but the Traveler rejected the link and abandoned them. In pursuit of the final shape and the Traveler, the predecessors resolved to use the power of the darkness to merge, and thus to become the harbinger of the final shape. The being born out of this apotheosis, the collective merging of an entire people's thought and consciousness in the power of darkness, was the witness. This explains a whole lot. In fact, it explains some of the greatest mysteries in Destiny's story. We now finally understand the origin of the witness, that it is not an individual but an entire collective consciousness of a whole people, an entire civilization that was spurned by the Traveler in their attempt to control its primordial chaos. We now also know that the Winnower and Gardener are allegories 
told through the mythology of the Witnesses' people, allegories representing control and chaos. We also understand now that the Veil and the Traveler are the two original entities as best we can understand. We do not have the original creation behind these two forces of power, but we do know that they had to exist before the Witnesses' people, and as a result, we can understand perhaps what is first within the universe. This does, however, throw more questions from old times back into the mix. The mythology of the Winnower and the Gardener created a convenient understanding of the birth of the universe. That understanding is now changed, and it's not clear what's going on anymore. The story of the unveiling may well simply be allegory for the nature in which the Traveler abandoned the people who made up the Witness. Ultimately, there are so many answers here that I can't possibly go over all of them in a single video. Simply explaining the cutscene is one thing, but combining it with everything to do with what we've learned about the Witnesses' people from Asa, what we've learned about the Veil from the various logs that have been left behind by Chioma Essi, and what we now know about the Traveler and its various communications. All these are topics that I need to talk about and will definitely be talking about for some weeks. But today I wanted to go ahead and use this moment to voice a few thoughts. Does this cutscene answer some questions? Absolutely it does, and I'm glad that we finally have answers to these very important questions. But, and this is most definitely my complaint here, this season, Season of the Deep, was completed and finished and planned before Lightfall was deployed. This was a conscious choice to separate off this particular part of the narrative into a different season and to leave people with questions. I know this is a dead horse and that I'm beating it again, but I cannot in good conscience sit here and make this video and not pretend as though this isn't something which some people are going to be incredibly frustrated by. It's awesome that we have the answers, and you know what? I love the narrative that's being told here. It's got a lot of interesting places that it can go, but there is a really sour taste in my mouth after this one. I can't help but sit here and think that this is one of those moments at which the content itself is great, but the mechanism by which it's been deployed is abysmal. This, this cutscene, this should have been one of the central pillars of Lightfall. This should have been something that we got as a revelation, maybe halfway through the campaign, maybe in this moment where we were able to link with some powerful artifact found within Callus's possession. Maybe this was a moment at which we interrupted something. Maybe we learned this directly from the Veil itself. No matter what, this should not have been a part of the story of Season of the Deep. This should have been part of the central plot of Lightfall. This created an understanding, not just of what the Veil might be, but also of what the Witness is and why we should care. It helps us to understand the nature of the final shape, which creates stakes within the story, because now we know that the Witness is attempting to rewrite all of reality. Those are about as big stakes as you can get in Destiny. Rewriting reality is definitely something we want to keep the Witness from doing, and so we have every single reason to then stop the Witness from claiming the Veil. So yeah, you have great stakes that could have been set up there. More importantly, whilst it is one of those things that doesn't fully explain the nature of the Veil, it tells us enough about it to let us know that it is important that it has been there for a very long time, that it's a primordial and mysterious force in the universe, and that it is linked and similar in a certain sense to the Traveler. In a weird way, the Veil being mysterious works really well if you can explain the whole point here of why the Witness is trying to actually claim it. I would have been okay with the Veil mystery being unveiled at a later date if we'd actually understood these stakes. Now let's be clear, we still don't fully understand this link and what the Witness has done and where the Witness has gone, but we at least now know 
why the veil was important, and we understand what the stakes are here. This, this should have been in Lightfall. You could still have unpacked a ton of those mysteries to do with what the veil is, where the witness has gone, how to follow it in the follow-up seasons. But unfortunately, we are left in this moment with answers that should have been in our laps four or five months ago. I'm sorry, but this will be a huge lesson because it is a failure. And I will reiterate for the sake of nuance here, the delivery of the content is the failure, not the content itself. The actual writing that's been done here, the ideas behind everything, how it links into the various mythologies and rumors that we've always half understood about the darkness, the witness, the traveler, the winnower, all of these different ideas. It's excellent. It ties everything together neatly with a bow on top. But whoever decided that this should be something separated out from Lightfall and put into the Season of the Deep should not have made that decision. And I'm really sorry, but that is a decision that carries the weight of Lightfall's failure. That is not something that Season of the Deep gets to take credit for. The quality of the story beat that's being told, absolutely. The delivery of that story to us four months after the fact, absolutely not. It is a core pillar of why Lightfall's narrative failed, and I think that it would be a dereliction of some duty of mine to sit there and talk about this cutscene without mentioning that. So yeah, that's unbelievably disappointing, and I have to be honest with this. Whilst I'm going to unpack a lot more to do with this cutscene, and whilst I'm going to be going over the revelatory significance of it over the next few weeks, I needed to say this first. This cutscene, or some variation of it, should have been in Lightfall. No ifs, no buts, simply it should have. And I'm sorry if you disagree with me on that, but I don't think that many of you do. If you do agree with me, we're going to go ahead and throw something out here, because this is a teachable moment. If you agree, leave a like on the video, just like we did when it came to the criticism and when it came to the stuff to do with the veil. Because you know what? This is the second part to that criticism. And leaving a like here hopefully spreads this message. It is not to do with the fact that it is a bad story. It is to do with the fact that it was carved into two when it realistically should have been served together. You can't make a car by simply creating everything but for the wheels and leaving them next to the unfinished chassis and call it a day. That is kind of what it feels like. We got Lightfall and it felt like a car without wheels. It wasn't going anywhere. We now have the wheels and we understand how everything was supposed to work. But it's too late. We've all been disappointed by that car. So yeah, I'm gonna have to sit here and say that as the main thrust of this video. And it's a shame, because you know what? This should be a day when everyone is utterly blown away, and I'm sure it still is for a lot of us. But I can't not talk about that. This should have been in Lightfall. If you agree, go ahead and hit the like button. I don't think this needs to be rammed home in the same way that a lot of other criticism does, but I think that this is something we need to say as a community loud and clear when it comes to the narrative. So if you agree, hit the like button, and if you have any thoughts of your own, leave them down below in the comments, and please do be respectful. This is still a moment of feedback, and even though this is a lesson which hopefully should be glaringly obvious to all of the developers, if there's any other critique you have, constructively leave it below. I also want to reiterate that whenever something like this comes up, there are a number of people out there in the community who needlessly harass developers. And to those people, I would like to remind you all to touch some grass and leave. Get off the internet. This is a video game, and yes, it's disappointing, and yes, it is so frustrating when things like these happen. But this is literally my job, and I'm not as angry about this stuff as you guys seem to be. So please, if you're sitting there and thinking of sending an angry, threatening comment to a developer, remember that you exist in the real world too, and that you don't need to be such a pathetic gremlin. Get off the internet. Critique 
is where we will leave our line. Vitriol is not. So yeah, let's be better. I certainly hope this comes across as something that is more professional and as something that has less of a tone of vitriol than the last video I made back at the beginning of Lightfall. So yeah, all of that being said, I will continue covering Destiny's lore from this season. There's a lot to talk about. First and foremost, we will probably talk about what we've learned from the Veil, especially considering that there are, of course, new things going on in the lore with the Veil questline that is also progressing. And of course, after all that said and done, we need to talk about the other things I mentioned. The Witness and its people, their history, the truth and realities behind the unveiling lore and what bits and pieces that we've learned are accurate, and everything to do with, well, the communications of the Traveler and what it knows, and perhaps a little bit more about its intent, something which is made even more clear now that we know what Asa has told us. There's a lot to unpack from this, and I look forward to doing that. But today's video needs to be about honest feedback, and to sit there and say that, hey, you sold us the car, and the wheels arrived four months late. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as per usual, know that your viewership, as always, is quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Rodasia Adastra. I'll see you, Starside.